This is Shigaraki Town, Shiga Prefecture. Hi, I'm Michelle. This town is one of the major ceramics producing areas in Japan. And it is especially known for making raccoon dog figurines, which can be seen all over the town. The Takumi, or innovator, I'll introduce to you today makes something really amazing using traditional ceramic manufacturing technique. Let's go find out what he's making. Hello, I'm Michelle. Today's Takumi is the president of a ceramics manufacturer, Eitsugu Osugi. He reviewed the unconventional piece of work that his company had produced. This is a renowned Japanese folding screen of the gods of wind and thunder, said to have been painted in the 17th century. It's a ceramic screen. Ceramics? Yes, place your hand on it. <laughs> It's really cold! To my surprise, the folding screen was a replica made from ceramics. This is the original. The Takumi acquired copyright permission from the owner and created the replica. When they are compared, you can see that it is a faithful reproduction. The folding screen is not the only replica the company had created. These are replicas of mural paintings from the walls of an ancient Japanese tomb called the Kitora tomb, dating back between the 7th and 8th century. The Kitora tomb was discovered in Asuka village in Nara prefecture. It is difficult to preserve the original mural paintings, so normally they are not open to the public. So instead, the Takumi's ceramic panel reproduction is used for permanent display. How are the replicas made? The Takumi introduced the process of reproducing the mural paintings. To make a replica, a ceramic panel is used. The panel is baked once and a soft clay is applied over it. First, a craftsman deliberately scratches the outer layer to reproduce the rough surface. Then the ceramic panel is baked in a kiln in a temperature of over 1,200 degrees Celsius for 8 hours. Next is the coloring. The original photograph image is transferred onto a special sheet. This sheet is made out of special ceramic paint, which is dipped into a solution. It is carefully placed over the ceramic panel. Finally, it is baked again and the imagery transfers onto the panel. But with this method, the deep part of the groove stays uncolored. The craftsman carefully paints over it and the panel is baked once again. This process is repeated as many times as needed. This is how they are able to recreate the painting down to the last detail. If other companies also acquire their painting technique, won't they be able to make replicas? It's not quite as easy. But why is that? For example, the ceramic may crack like this. When an ordinary ceramic panel is baked repeatedly, it cracks and breaks. Let's explain the mechanism. Ceramic that is baked and hardened contains small crystallized grains of silica. These crystal grains have a property of suddenly changing their volume when heated between 250 and 400 degrees Celsius. When baked repeatedly, the volume of the silica suddenly expands. As it cools, there is an acute contraction. Due to these sudden changes, the ceramic cracks, and these cracks can lead to breaking the ceramic. But the Takumi's company succeeded in adding something to the ceramic itself, which prevents it from breaking when baked repeatedly. The Takumi added a substance, which is a company trade secret, but by using this technique, it can be applied in replicating cultural assets. He began this research 30 years ago. 
The idea was to provide more opportunities for the public to come in contact with precious cultural heritage. 20 years ago, a museum was established to display replicas made using a ceramic panel. There is a collection of over a thousand famous pieces of work by artists such as Vincent van Gogh and Leonardo da Vinci. Many people in the art industry were awestruck by the world's first unique challenge. The application of this technique has been expanding, including the creation of original monuments. The Takumi hopes to further pursue the precise replication technology. At the moment, the surface irregularities are reproduced by the craftsman. But if more accurate information can be recreated on the surface of the ceramic, I believe that the culture value of the replicas will rise. That's my next challenge. Today, I brought a ceramic panel replica of the famous painting, Girl with a Pearl Earring by Johannes Vermeer. It's beautiful. So this is not a painting, but it's printed on ceramics? That's right. You know it once you feel it. Can I? Of course. Oh, yes, it's hard. You can hear it. Mm. What I found amazing was the unique idea of linking ceramics to replicate paintings. It is the same with research. We are urged to think outside the box and link our research with other fields, but it's not easy to do. I hope that Takumi will continue to think unconventionally and come up with more creative ideas. Thank you very much, Michelle. Dr. Sato, today we focused on the latest research that integrate living organisms with machines. How would you wrap this up? When you think about integration of machines and living matters, you might imagine a world of science fiction. But in fact, research in this field has progressed much further than we think and some may be put to practical use in the near future. I'm excited about the development of robots, such as the surgical robot, because it would offer many benefits to our health. On the other hand, what will become crucial in the future as we handle living organisms is to establish ethical guidelines and a social consensus. I look forward to seeing where this research will take us. And that's all for this week's Science View. Thank you for joining us. And see you next time.